Hey, welcome back. Today I want to talk to you about true reflections. Um, you know, oftentimes we have a, an idea of what we think we look like or what we think people see when they look at us. Um, we, we have a, a, an idea of how we think people perceive us. And sometimes our perception is accurate. Sometimes it's not quite accurate. So I want to talk to you about true, true reflections. Um, you know, most of us in the morning when we're getting dressed to go out uh, and we want to know how we look before we head out the door, we're going to do one of two things, right? We're going to either ask somebody who lives with us, hey, how do I look? You know, am I wearing the right co color combination here? Uh, are these heels too high? Does this outfit make me look fat? Mm. Some of you heard that before, I know. That's a dangerous question right there, I know. Uh, and sometimes when you ask somebody how you look, you may not really care for their answer or maybe the answer is too vague so what you gonna do you're gonna go to a mirror take a look right. uh, most houses probably have multiple mirrors at least one in the bedroom or one in the bathroom i know i have probably five or six mirrors throughout my house okay um even the little circular uh magnifying mirror that you sit on your vanity in the bathroom you want to get a real close look and see what's going on with your face right uh, i have a couple of full-length stand-up mirrors. I can see head to toe. How do I look? We're very, very conscientious about how we look. Not just how we look, but how other people see us when we're out in public, when we're interacting with people. It's very, very important to us. Our perception means a lot to us. Well, the Word of God is concerned about more so how we look on the inside than how we look on the outside. God is more concerned about our attitude in our thinking god is more concerned about what's in your heart because what's in your heart is going to manifest on the outside in the book of james chapter 1 verses 22 through 25 the word of god reads but be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like a man observing his face in a mirror. He's like a man observing his face hmm, in a mirror. For he observes himself, then goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in whatever he does. So the word of God is warning us not to be just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. He says, if you're, if, you're, if you're a hearer and not a doer, you are like a person looking in the mirror, seeing what type of person they are, and then walking away and immediately forgetting what you just saw. God's word is a mirror. God's word is a mirror. And when we look into the word of God, God will begin to show us who we are. Not all of it is bad. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that God's word is there to, to correct us or to whip us into shape or to punish us. But the word of God will show you who you are if you desire to know. The word of God will never lie to you. The word of God will never deceive you. The word of God will definitely show you your strengths as well as your weaknesses without condemning you. The word of God will never flatter us, as some people will, and it will never puff us up to believe something about ourselves that's not true. God wants you to have a true reflection of who you are from his perspective, not so much from your family or your friends or your coworkers or your neighbors, not even your own perception. And I pray oftentimes, God, I want to know from your point of view, how do you see me? How do you see my life? What does my life look like to you? What type of value have you placed on me? How important am I to God? How important is my life to God? One thing I know about God is that he doesn't have to have you open up your Bible in order for him to show you who you are, in order to give you a true reflection. Because sometimes just life's events will give you a glimpse of who you really are based on circumstances and how you respond to those circumstances. Many of us have been touched by COVID-19 this past year. Some of us have been sick. Some of us have lost family members and loved ones. And how we respond to that can be a true reflection of what's going on inside of you, who you blame, 
who do you hold accountable? Um, Black Lives Matter, boy. Black Lives Matter. That 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 whole idea, that whole concept has shaken up our country. It, that thing has has echoed around the globe, if you will. What's happening here in the United States concerning Black Lives Matter, and even the church, even the body of Christ, has been divided to some extent because of this issue of Black Lives Matter. Oh my goodness! Don't even talk about the most recent election. There are people who have said. How can you not vote for Donald Trump if you're a Christian? What? What scripture are you reading from? When did my salvation, when did anybody's salvation depend upon who they voted for? I'm sure a lot of people are surprised with how, how they responded to Trump losing this last election. I'm sure a lot of those people who went down to the Capitol had no intention of rioting, if you will, and, and, and storming the police that were out there and, and actually forcing their way into the Capitol, but they got caught up. Some of them, some of them got caught up in the madness. Some of the people who were out there protesting Black Lives Matter, some of them got caught up. Okay. But the thing about it is just something inside of you that is, that is so buried deep that perhaps you don't even know what's inside of you sometimes. Sometimes we see the opportunity to do good and we don't do it. That's a test. God will show you what's inside of you by using everyday life as a means of testing us. Not so that he knows what's inside of us, but so that we know. So that we can say, wow, where did that come from? I didn't know that was even in me. I didn't know I felt that way. I didn't know I thought that way. I need to make some adjustments. I need to go in, into God's garage and say, okay, God, I'm here. <laughs> I'm throwing my hands up. I'm surrendering whatever you need to do in my life to make me more like you. I'm a willing vessel. I am surrendering my will to your will. Some people may say you're very uh, pushy, like almost like a bully. And you might be in denial of that. And when you finally do acknowledge it, you may say, well, yeah, I am kind of pushy. I am, I am somewhat of a bully, but I'm a bully because when I was a kid, you know, my mom, she, she, she bullied me. Well, we're not asking why you're that way. We want you to, first of all, just acknowledge God wants you. God needs you to acknowledge what's happening in your life. Where are you? True reflections. You could be holding uh, some unforgiveness towards somebody. And you may say, I don't, I don't hold any, any unforgiveness. I've forgiven them a long time ago. But God knows the truth. So until you acknowledge that, what can God do about it? Just continue to point it out to you, that's all. You can shove it under the rug like it doesn't exist, but God knows. It's a true reflection of who we really are. And I don't know, maybe I'm just a glutton for punishment, but I'm always asking God, God, show me who I am from your perspective. And anything you see in my life that needs to be fine-tuned, that needs to be somehow adjusted, by all means, make that adjustment or show me how to make that adjustment. I want to be all that God wants me to be and I want God to use me in whatever capacity he wants to. I want to I be able to be used by God. I want to be a vessel of honor and an instrument of God's righteousness. I don't want there to be anything in my life that hinders God from using me to the fullest extent so listen, I don't want you to think that the purpose of God's word is just to shine the light on the dark areas of your life in order to show you all the sin in your life and show you what a bad person you are. I'm sure most of us already know that we have sin in our lives. We already know that we're not perfect. We already know that we disobey God at times. And think about it, people around you will remind you of it also. Sometimes we get our, our uh, self-esteem from what other people say or think about us. People tell you that you're dumb. You know, some of us grew up thinking that we would never amount to anything because somebody told us that. People told us we had no value. Um, God doesn't love you. Uh, and people tell us that God can never forgive us. Sometimes even people in the church, because we've committed adultery or because you had an abortion. Maybe you had multiple abortions, I don't know. Maybe you were a liar or a thief. Um, People want you to think that you have no self-worth. 
But that's, that's not what the Word of God says about us. And think about it, the people who tell us these things, they don't always say it out of their mouth. Sometimes they say it with their actions. People say more sometimes with their actions than with their actual words. And what's worse about it is that sometimes the people who tell us these things are the people who are closest to us. People in our family, people who we call our friends, our associates. And so we have to make sure that we get our self-esteem from God's Word. That's why I'm saying we need to look at the Word of God and let that be our mirror so you can have a true reflection of who you really are according to God's perspective. The Word of when I read the Word of God, it tells me that I am wonderfully and fearfully made in His image. And if I'm made in God's image, we know that God doesn't make junk. He doesn't make trash. Okay, so I mean, there's something, there's something good in me. No matter what you see in my life that may be bad, there is still something within me that, that's good because it came from God. The Word tells me in, in the mirror that no weapon formed against me to be able to prosper. The mirror of God's Word tells me that all things work together for the good to those who love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. The Word of God tells me that if God is for me, who can be against me? God's a good judge of character. And some of the things that God has pointed out to me, I didn't want to acknowledge it at first. But because I know God's not going to lie to me, because I know God is going to tell me the truth, and because I know that God wants me to be the person who he ordained for me to be, he's going to bring things to my attention. Let me use this analogy. It's kind of like taking your vehicle in for a routine checkup and the mechanic comes out and says, you know what, your timing belt is about to go. Your timing belt needs to be replaced right now, today, while you're in here. Otherwise, with the next 50 miles, you probably be back, be back in here with some serious trouble. And you ask them how much it's going to cost, and they tell you a price. You go, oh my God, how much is that? Man, I just came in and get my oil changed. What are, you, what, what are you doing under my hood looking at my timing belt for? <laughs> you know, I, I, I thought that way sometimes. But nevertheless, the timing belt is about to go. They're giving you a price and getting it replaced. You're focused more so on the cost of the repair versus the potential damage that can be done down the road. Sometimes allowing God to make a minor adjustment in our life today can save us so much heartache and trouble down the road if we allow God to make some adjustments in our life, if we surrender those areas to our life and say, okay, God, I didn't know that it was there. I'm not gonna run from you. Show me how to get this fixed. Deal with my unforgiveness. Deal with my hatred. Deal with my jealousy. Deal. I often ask God, are you proud of me? Are you pleased with the life that I live? You know, we, we have children. And of course, all of us have expectations for our children. We want to see them do well in life. And there are certain things that we want to see our kids not get involved in. Hopefully they will avoid these things and they'll gravitate more so to these things over here. Sometimes our children, just like we do, make bad decisions. And sometimes we are embarrassed by the decisions that our children make. Sometimes we may even feel ashamed, say, wow, I can't believe my, my child did that. I'm just, I don't know what to say for myself. I didn't raise, I didn't raise them like that. I didn't, those, those are not seeds that I planted in them. And I ask myself sometimes, God, are you embarrassed by me? Not that God can be embarrassed, but if you could be embarrassed, God, are, are you embarrassed by my life? Are you ashamed of me? God will always love me. His love is unconditional. God's never going to stop loving me. But what I want to know is, is he pleased with my life? If God could be ashamed or embarrassed, God, are you ashamed of me? Are you embarrassed by me? Are you, or, or are you proud to call me your son because of how I live my life? That matters to me. I don't want to just be in the kingdom of God. I don't want to just be a Christian. I want to make sure that I have the proper, true reflection of how God sees me. And whatever needs to be adjusted in my life, God, make that adjustment. Fine-tune me. 
change the oil, rotate the tires, pull an engine out, put a new engine in, whatever you got to do, let me be more like your son, Jesus. You know, sometimes when we hear the word of God being preached and the minister may be pointing out uh, somebody's character or character flaws, oftentimes we will think of other people that we know who that applies to. Seldom do we say, oh, that's me. We don't want to think about it like that. That word is for me. We think about someone else who we know. But sometimes God is saying, no, no, no. You're in that category too. You may not think of yourself as being self-righteous. You may not think of yourself as being high-minded or, or uh, unforgiving or selfish or whatever the case might be. You may not think of yourself as falling in that category. But sometimes God is saying, no, no, you, you're in there too. So while you're thinking about brother so-and-so, think about yourself and think about how this word applies to you. Look in the mirror, take a, take, take a good look in the mirror of God's word, examine yourself compared to the word of God, and don't be guilty of comparing yourself to others and saying, well, at least I'm not like that. I know I have flaws, I know I have imperfections, but I don't act like that. I don't live like that. I don't talk like that. I'm a Christian. I don't use that kind of language. So hopefully this, this word has spoken to your heart today. Hopefully it has brought about some, some things for you to think about, some things for you to take to God and ask God, okay, God, speak to my heart. If God speaks to your heart, don't ignore what he says. Allow him to bring about that change so that he can spare you some potential damage down the road. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you next time. God bless.